Greetings kindred spirits, this is Megan, and Lucy Maud Montgomery created this delightful little series around a young woman named Anne Shirley. So this is video three in my Anne of Green Gables name series. My first two videos I talked about names from the first two books, Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea, so now I will do the same with book three, which is Anne of the Island, and I'm going to go up to book six, which is Anne of Ingleside, where I will conclude my little name series. Um, briefly, I just want to say that if I miss a name that you love, hopefully I talked about it in one of the first two videos or it'll make one of the next three because I'm trying not to repeat character names over and over. I hope I don't at least because that just doesn't sound entertaining. So that said, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? The first name I have for you is Ada for Ada Harvey. It is a German name. It means noble. It's currently number 487. It is a biblical name. It's um, a palindrome name as well. And I think it is a really cool alternative to the much more popular Ava. Then I have Aileen for Aileen Gardner. Aileen is an English name. It may possibly mean um, lovely. It is really uncommon now and part of why the meaning lovely is disputed is because that it was a name much more popular in the Middle Ages. Then I have Avril for Avril Lester. So Avril is actually a character in a short story that Anne wrote called Avril's Atonement. It's an English name meaning boar battle and Avril is a unisex name. Next is Carrie for Carrie Sloan. So Carrie is a diminutive of names like Caroline and Carol. It means free man. Carrie has really just snow dived in popularity in the past 30 years. I think because people are using other names that are similar like Carly. Then I have Christine for Christine Stewart. Christine is a French name. It means anointed. It also means follower of Christ. It's currently number 652 in popularity. Um, Christine has a lot of cute nickname potentials, I think, to it. It is um, really, it has sunk quite a bit in popularity as well. Then I have Eliza for Eliza Andrews. Eliza is a diminutive of the name Elizabeth, so it means pledge to God. It's currently number 252. Um, it is a name that's climbing the charts a little bit, and I think it's because a lot of girls' names in particular that were once kind of old-fashioned are getting a little bit of a boost, so it's one of those old is new again names. And I'm happy to see it come back. I think it's a beautiful name. Then I have Fred for Fred Wright. Fred is a German name. It is a diminutive or it's short for names like Alfred and Frederick. Um, I think it's interesting that Fred is not that popular amongst babies in the United States, but I hear Fred a lot in um, pop culture things, so shows and books and stuff like that, so yeah. Then I have Harry for Harry Inglis. Harry is a diminutive of the name Henry. It means a state ruler. It's currently number 718 in popularity. And it's kind of crazy that Harry is so low in popularity here in the United States. Because in other English speaking countries, particularly Ireland, England, and Scotland, it is one of the top 10 names for babies. Then I have Jamesina. Jamesina Maynard is the character, or Aunt Jamesina. Um, it's a feminization of the name James, which means subplanter. As much as I love the name James, Jamesina is super interesting, but goodness is it a mouthful. Good character name, I suppose. Then I have John for John Blythe. John is a Hebrew name. It means God is gracious. It's currently number 28 in the United States, which is actually the lowest that it has been since names have been recorded in this country. <laughs> then I have Jonas for Jonas Blake. Jonas is a Greek name. It's a variation of the name Jonah, which means the dove. I like that meaning. It's currently number 474 in the United States. I do prefer the name Jonah to Jonas, but I think Jonas as a first name is really kind of cool and interesting. I definitely see the appeal. Next is Nettie for Nettie Blewett. So Nettie is an English name. It's a nickname um, for all those names that end in the E-T-T-E -T -T -E ending, such as um, Annette, for example. And um, to me, it has kind of like a sweet granny kind of vibe to it. I'm not sure that this one is quite ready for a comeback in the way um, some old-fashioned names like Eliza are. 
And then I have Paul for Paul Irving. Paul is a Latin name. It means small. It's currently number 193 in the United States, which is the lowest that it has been since names have been recorded here as well. Um, but it is an old-fashioned name, but it doesn't feel dated to me. I, I can hear a Paul easily and not think, wow, that's an old name. <laughs> Next is Percival. So Percival was also a character in Anne's short story, um, Avril's Atonement. It's a French name that means one who pierces the valley. Definitely makes a really cool and rich character name. Um, I don't know how useful it is. Maybe with a nickname like Percy or Perry or something like that. Then I have Philippa for Philippa Gordon. Philippa is a Greek name. It means lover of horses. I love horses, so I love that meaning. Um, and following the royal wedding, Philip Milton, Middleton, excuse me, um, kind of brought this name to attention, I think, to us in the United States who don't hear it as much. It's still not in the top 1,000 yet, though. And then I have Roy for Royal Gardener, who goes by Roy, Roy Gardner. Um, so Roy is a French name. It means red-haired. It's currently number 561. It has sunk as well in popularity. Um, Roy has a very it's such a small name, like a short name, but it has a strong air of masculinity, masculinity, masculinity about it to me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this book is also stuffed with lots of amazing names um, and characters that um, some of these are lesser known, but I still wanted to just mention a few more names. So I'll quickly throw those on the screen. And they are Adolphus, Alonzo, Atusa, Dorcas, Dorothy, Elisha, Herb, or Herb, <laughs> Hiram, Josiah, and Moody. So yeah, I thought those were fun. Maybe you think so? Let me know what you think of all these names, of course, in the comments below. I have all the names listed in the description box, as well as my links, a link to my latest blog post, which talks about some names from this series. I hope that you will, of course, subscribe and come back tomorrow when I'll talk about some names from End of Windy Poplars. Thanks so much for watching.